Hey there, physics peeps. We're going to take a look at projectile motion and how to determine speed of a projectile. So when we talk about projectiles, the key thing that we need to remember is that the path for a projectile, even though it follows the path of a parabola, really follows a combination of an object that's going in the x direction and the y direction. So something that's following a straight line path, like gravity's turned off and this cannonball were to float in the air, it would go at a constant speed. And so it would, uh, if we actually track the motion of the ball that followed this par parabola, the real path, it actually is in the same spot as uh, the cannonball that goes at a constant speed horizontally. Vertically, it also keeps up with a ball that's drop straight down. So this path, we say it's a combination of the two, the x path and the y path. So we're going to set up our problems in a particular way. And on your paper, you need to make sure that your paper is set up so that at the top, you write projectile speed. Or projectiles one speed and I want you to number your paper one through eight but the front side is just numbers one two three four make sure that you space it out and then on the back side you number it uh, five six seven eight and again you have them spaced out there on the margin so they're not right next to each other you should have plenty of space to do your work because some of these problems, they do take a little bit uh, when you set them up. And, but you'll find that the more of these that you do and you get into the groove of it, it's not that bad. So solving out the problems. We're going to start with this. A cannonball is fired horizontally to the right off a cliff at a speed of 90 meters per second. Find the horizontal and vertical speed of the cannonball after one second. When we solve this problem out, we're uh, because this follows a parabolic path or something that's going to be coming down here at an angle. After one second, exactly where this ball is, uh, we'll figure that out where exactly it is. And but to figure out the horizontal and vertical speeds, it, it's really hard to describe this stuff that's coming at an angle. So instead, we describe it as X and Y. And so on your paper, next to number one, we're going to set it up. You write an X. And halfway across your paper, you write Y. This is our first step. We split it up X and Y. Second step is you write out the initial speeds in those directions. And the initial speed in the x direction, it's like what speed it started at. Well, this thing was shot horizontally off a cliff at 90 meters per second, which means that it's going this way at 90 meters per second. Remember when we talked about something that's horizontal, that we can kind of talk about it as one of the components. Well, this is just one of the components. Everything there is in the x component because x is horizontal. And y, y stands for vertical. This is not shot up or down at an angle. There is no y component. So initially, the initial velocity is zero meters per second. That's step two, listing the initial speeds. Step three is saying what's actually happening in those directions. In the x direction, if we imagine that cannonball being fired and gravity's turned off and it goes off in a straight line, this is moving at a constant speed. But in the vertical direction, on the wide side, this is falling down. It's not moving at a constant speed. It's accelerating on the way down. So it's accelerating. But on the way down, because it's accelerating, 
and it's accelerating because of gravity, I actually know the acceleration. It's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And, and that's the acceleration from gravity. Now we can actually answer some stuff here. And so that was step three, telling what we needed to do. Step one, split it up X and Y. Step two, list the initial speeds. And then step three, uh, say that what's happening in those speeds. It's constant speed on the X side. It's vertical, or on the vertical side, it is accelerating on the way down due to gravity. So it's negative 9.8. These things, just to let you know, you can keep these things separate. And then if you want to draw a line down the middle, some people like that. That's okay. But now it's actually solving this out. And the big thing is if this side is constant speed, if I started at 90 meters per second, constant speed just means that the speed stays the same. After one second, it's 90. After two seconds, three seconds, 100 seconds, it's going to end up being the same speed. So for this one, I know what my answer is going to be. It's going to stay at 90 meters per second for the horizontal speed. On my paper, I'm just going to label this Vx. And that means horizontal speed. And I'm going to put a box around it. And so that's my horizontal speed, Vx, equals 90 meters per second. On my y side, though, my answer is not 90 meters per second. And it's not zero, because it might have started at zero, but this is where uh, the acceleration, it's making that velocity change. And there are three equations that we can end up using when we solve these problems out. And these are going to be the three. V equals D over T. Or we have things like D equals 1 half AT squared. Oops. Sorry. D equals VI T times T plus 1 half AT squared. Or VF equals VI plus A times T. The equation that I want to choose to use has to match what's what with what's going on on this side. Because I'm accelerating, my equation to solve for a vertical speed has to have acceleration in it. Well, I am solving for a final speed after a certain amount of time. And this equation has acceleration in it. So I use that. Vf equals Vi plus A times T. Make sure that you're copying this down as we go because this is part of your assignment. So it's more of kind of a doing thing than just a watching thing. So make sure you're copying it down as we go. But I'm looking for this final speed. My initial speed though, I have to watch out. It is not 90. And my initial speed, it has to come from the Y side because I'm solving for it on the Y side. My initial speed is zero. Plus the acceleration on the Y side, I said my thing's accelerating, it's due to gravity, it's negative 9.8 is my acceleration. And then my time, I'm looking for after one second. So I put a one in there. So my velocity that I solve for is zero plus, I do this stuff first, negative 9.8 times one, so negative 9.8, oh yeah, it's just negative 9.8. And because I solve for speed, it's meters per second, but I label this as V Y, that is telling me my vertical split uh, velocity or vertical speed. And these are my two answers. And something uh, just to note is that we don't use this equation, V equals D over T, to solve for speed on this side. Because uh, we are solving for velocity on the vertical side, and we said that it's accelerating on the way down, the equation has to have acceleration in it in order to use this equation. We will use this equation, though, later. You'll see that uh, another time. And so that's after one second. And that's your answer to parts of your assignment. So now let's take a look at two seconds. And this new problem. And so this problem goes with number two. And so on your uh, paper, go to number two. This problem, it says, 
a cannonball. It's fired horizontally to the right off a cliff at a speed of 90 meters per second. Find the horizontal and vertical speed of the cannonball after two seconds. So when we're trying to figure out the speed of the cannonball after two seconds, the horizontal and vertical, we know that the cannonball, it follows this parabolic path on the way down, but it also matches up with these <clears throat> uh, paths. If we kind of pretend like gravity is turned off and it follows a straight line path that in the X direction, and it'll go at a constant speed. Or if it's going in this straight down path on the Y direction, really those paths match up. So we split up our problem. X on one side, and then halfway across your paper, it's Y. That's step one. Split it up, X and Y. Again, if you want to split these up with a line down the middle, that's fine. But then, step two is to list the initial speeds on each side. And the initial speeds, again, this thing, it's shot horizontally at 90 meters per second. So following this path, because it's shot horizontally, it's not up or down at an angle. That means that all of that speed initially is in the X direction. And in the Y direction, again, it's not shot up or down at an angle. So originally, it's like it's at rest vertically, or there's no Y component to it. The initial speed is zero meters per second. That's step two. Step three is to tell what's happening in those directions. So if it did follow this path, like gravity's turned off and it went in a straight line, it would keep going at a constant speed. And then if it followed this vertical path in the Y direction, its speed, it's not going to stay constant. It's going to speed up. It's going to get faster and faster on the way down. So it's accelerating. But because it's accelerating on the way down, it's because of gravity. Its acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And it's negative, and we're coming back to that negative part because it's on its way down. And that's going to play a role in what we do. And so <clears throat> that's step three. Step one, split it up X and Y. Step two, list the initial velocity. Step three, tell what's going on in each of those directions. And then now we can tell what the horizontal and vertical speeds are. Horizontal velocity or horizontal speed of the cannonball after two seconds, well, it's moving at a constant speed. So it doesn't matter if it's one second, two seconds, three seconds later. It is moving at 90 meters per second, but I'm going to list it as Vx. That is my horizontal speed. And so, <clears throat> boop, 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 boop. Then for my uh, vertical speed, I have to go over to the Y side and solve it out over there. I'm not going to solve it out over here because this is all X. This is where I solve out my Y. And I have those three equations that I can use to solve things out. So that's D equals VI times T plus one half AT squared. And uh, VF equals VI plus A times T. Because I am solving for a vertical speed, I need an equation that either solves for speed, but it's also accelerating. So the equation has to have acceleration in it. So I have to use this VF equals VI plus A times T. So I have to put in my initial speed. Careful, it is not 90. It is zero because it is on my vertical side. That's also why I'm solving for it on the vertical side. Plus the acceleration, it's negative 9.8 on the Y side. Times the time. Now I'm looking after two seconds. So I multiply these things together and I get negative 19.6. Because I solved for a speed, it's meters per second. And because I solved for a vertical speed, it's Vy. And I put a box around it. That's how you solve that, and that's all the steps. You have other problems that you'll do after this, but let your teacher know if you have questions.
You guys are doing great. All right, see you guys.